Okay, folks, this is a little bit of a different video than normal. All it is about is making videos. I get a lot of requests from people when I show up on Zoom calls using this exact setup, or if I'm out meeting people, having been at events, or just generally in conversation. Some of you even come to me here on this uh, LinkedIn channel or over on YouTube or wherever else we interact online, and you ask me, what tech do I use? And I feel like there's like more than enough information out there in the world for answering how to build a good tech setup, but still I get asked this question all the time. And so I thought I'd have a go at, in my own style, try and explain to you a little bit about some of the tech that I use that helps me get this look and this effect. So hopefully this will be helpful and give you an idea of what you can invest in to give your tech setup a, a better look and make things look good. Okay, the first thing and probably the most important thing is to talk cameras. The camera that I use is this. I have two of them. This is the ZV-E10 from Sony. One of the great things about it is, as you've just seen that quick switch there to this focus, is it has what's called product showcase mode, which allows you to quickly snap focus between you and the thing that you're showcasing. So this is the Sony ZV-E10. This is my uh, B camera, which I currently have uh, held in this small rig cage, which I use for kind of running, gunning, and also have it on this small rig tripod, uh, which is the second camera that I usually post over there. So if you sometimes see a video where there's a second view, that's what it is. The great things about these cameras is that they are powered directly over USB-C. So you don't have, if you've got one battery, you don't have to carry around like a battery charger pack. You can literally just open this up, plug it in via USB-C and also HDMI out. And that means that you can do a couple of things. One is you can charge it over USB-C. It takes the standard Sony batteries. So you can buy extras of these if you are out running around and using them elsewhere. But if you are just charging them over USB-C and you want to have it plugged in as your webcam, which I have one of these plugged in as my webcam, and I'll show you what that looks like now using this handy ability to switch to my iPhone camera. You'll see I've got another one of these mounted above the desk on a arm, and that gives me a direct view of you guys on screen. So that is the main camera that I'm using is the ZVE 10. So I have two of these. This one is using the standard kit lens that comes with it, 16 to 50 millimeters, uh, which basically gives you a nice wide focal range, but also you can zoom in for portraits. You can take photography with this, but there is no built in viewfinder. There is only a flip out screen, which is super handy for video and gets pretty bright even in bright light but because there is no viewfinder i find that taking photos with it is a little bit more difficult i tend to prefer to take photos with a viewfinder when i'm using an external camera like this but your mileage may vary you might find that useful so zve 10 is the camera like i say two of these one mounted above the desk one for out and about vlogging the other great thing about this is that they have a usb-c streaming mode i mentioned before that that usb-c um plug there which basically means that this current camera that I'm talking into at the moment, which has a Sigma 16 millimeter compatible E-mount lens for the Sony uh, plugged into it, it plugs in directly over USB-C straight into um, my desk setup, which I power with a Mac mini. And that USB-C cable is super helpful because it means whether that's going directly into this streaming software, which is Ecamm Live, I'll do another video about that at some point or other, or into my capture software, which I often use Descript to capture directly into so I can transcribe the video at the same time. It's one cable, one cable to power it, one cable to do USB streaming and straight out. So that is the hardware that powers all of this is the cameras, two ZV-E10s. You can find them on Amazon, often pretty competitively priced, small rig cages available. And this one in particular also has the Peak Design toggles. There you go. Which means that you can attach this little lanyard, which goes on your wrist, which is also very helpful. So that's the cameras, two of those. Okay, third camera is worth saying is, whilst I've recently switched over to the Pixel Fold as my main daily driver uh, phone, I also have a iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is my previous phone. Great cameras on this. If you've got one of these, probably don't upgrade to the 15 unless you really care about USB-C. But the good thing about it is that you also now, with the latest updates to Mac OS 17, if you're running Sonoma and using Ecamm Live as your video software, but you can also do this with the, the camera now with continuity camera through um, Mac OS, is you can switch to a camera using your iPhone. And so that means that you've got the immediate ability to use this as essentially as a third camera, either for a top down shot, for example, if I wanted to do a kind of over desk shot like this, I can now use this directly with this iPhone. 
or of course use it as a external webcam monitor if you're out and about roaming with that. So that is the iPhone as the kind of third camera essentially in this uh, overall setup. We talked about cameras. Let's now talk about sound, my favorite topic. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I originally started out as a radio producer and podcaster. And so this uh, it, microphone setup is the thing that I love uh, spending time with more than anything else. Um, for microphones, I'm a big fan of the Rode microphone. Uh, this is the Rode PodMic. It now comes in two different variations. This is the PodMic XLR, uh, which means it's got a direct XLR co connector. If you don't know what an XLR is, it's one of those funny cables that you see at the end of every microphone you've ever seen on stage used by stand-up comedians or by folks in the music industry and these pod mics are fantastic they've got a nice big open what's called cardioid pattern which means it picks up just the sound that's directly in front of it so that if i go off mic you'll notice the difference pretty quickly in terms of it picking up sound from elsewhere but if you talk right right down it hopefully i try and do that more often than not you'll get a good sound out of it now to get the sound into the computer though because this is an analog microphone into an xlr cable it means that I have to turn that into a digital signal to be able to get it into my computer so you can hear me like you're hearing me now or if I'm using this like on a Zoom call. And so one of the three first bits of tech which I'll share with you is the Elgato Wave XLR. This is the Wave XLR interface which I use to get sound into the computer. A couple of reasons why this is great. This basically allowed me to control the sound out which I have currently running into a pair of Bose Companion 2 speakers on my desk. I've had them for years super reliable, great sound, and uh, very easy to use. It also allows you to quick switch into managing the monitor mix. So how much of your microphone versus your speaker sound comes out. And then also, and one more click gives you your microphone input volume, which means we go up and we go back down again. The other great thing about this, if you are on calls, you can also just quick tap. And that red means muted, which is why you couldn't hear me. And so very quickly, you can switch to turn your mute on and off if you're in a call. So if you've just got to do a quick cough, really simple, really easy to use. You just go, as you'll have just demonstrated, quick tap on the top of that and you can mute on and off and you get that kind of nice red feedback. Over the back, you can see the connections, which is XLR in and out. I've got my audio jack 3.5 millimeter going out to my speakers and then it's powered over USB-C directly into my Mac mini. Okay, so that is audio, really not much more to say about that. I use this as my main setup for audio going in. However, if I am out roaming around or if I just want to change up the look of this and not have a microphone in front of my face, I also have a set of the Rode Wireless Go 2s, which I keep in this charging carry case, also available from Amazon. You'll have seen these all over TikTok and YouTube recently. Basically allows you for having one receiver and two microphones, lapel mics, Stick those on and away you go. Very easy to use. And again, you can just be plugged in via 3.5 millimeter jack directly into one of the cameras or into uh, a sound card or sound system. Those are super cool as well. Okay, that is cameras. And we've talked about sound. So the third thing is lights. Lighting is about the most important thing uh, that you can probably uh, do to make yourself look better for Zoom calls, webinars, web video uh, or just doing this type of recording particularly in a kind of stable scenario like this in an office i have three main sources of light in this office the first one is my key light or basically my primary light comes from the elgato ring light which is mounted above my desk which looks like this it's controllable again powered over USB-C, but it also has a wi-fi in it and the wi-fi basically means i can control the settings for it from this little control panel here on my computer, which basically means I can control the color temperature and also the velocity of the light all from one place. Okay, so that is the key light, the Elgato ring light is my main light, it's the thing that's lighting the majority of my face. You would know that it was more important if I was to show you what happens with the second light, which is my fill light. Why is it called a fill light? It fills in the part of my face that would otherwise be in shadow. Without it, it looks like this. So without this fill light, which is over here, I'll tell you about it in a second, it is the key light that's lighting me. Now it's helpful, but it gives quite a harsh look. With the fill light, we fill things in. And so what am I using for the fill light? The fill light in this case is the uh, Niwa 150, which is basically a cheaper version of the uh, Amaran 150. I'll try and show you what this looks like. This is the uh, Niwa 150. It has this kind of big glow shaped soft box. And basically, is a large light that is plugged in 
like power running That's over. True. And this thing is pretty big. It's not the most easy thing to put in your living room or office at home, but it does the job. And that additional light is super useful for filling in the, the uh, extra parts of my face that otherwise I wouldn't see. The great thing about it is it also comes with a remote control, which allows you to control the amount of uh, light you're getting, also the temperature of it, and crucially, turn it off and on again. And that's how it fills it out the light. The third source of light is the light that's behind me, which is these different accent lights. So here I've got a large multicolor bulb that can change different colors from this one's from Govi. And then there's also some other accent lights over there if I need them to change different colors. So that's lighting. Key light up there, the ring light from Elgato. Newer 150D as my uh, fill light. And then some kind of light behind you to create some separation between you and the background. Without it, you can see uh, how different it looks. So I'll just show you. Alexa, turn off the lights in the office. As you see, without the lights in the office, it's not a big deal, but it's just harder to see what's going on behind me. So Alexa, turn on the lights in the office. A little bit of color goes a long way. Okay, that's lights. We've talked about cameras. We've talked about sound. We've talked about lights. Now let's talk about control. Okay, when it comes to control, there's a couple of things that are going on here to basically make these videos, either because I'm making them for pre-recorded like this one on LinkedIn, YouTube, or, or wherever else, or because I'm live streaming directly. And in both cases, you need two things, really. One is to control the different scenes and settings that you're experiencing here. And then secondarily is actually to get the video out of the system and onto the internet. So let's take the hardware first. Now, you saw this a second ago. I will show you up close. This is the Stream Deck from Elgato. All sorts of different uh, setups you can get for these, and there are many different versions of it. But essentially what the Stream Deck is, a multifunctional array of different buttons that allow you to control software on the computer. Again, plugged in via USB into the Mac uh, Mini. So that is the control deck that is handling everything. Now, the thing about the Elgato in this instance is it is super useful for managing different parts of the video ecosystem. I mentioned before, we've got the lights that are going on. We've got sound, obviously, we've got the microphones, and then we've also got stuff that's happening on the computer, uh, and it can control all of that. My particular setup has different camera options. So if I can, if I hit this button, I can switch between our A camera, which is what you're looking at me on here, or the B camera, which is the tight crop version of it. Or there's also the C camera, which is the one that I'm pointing at the stream deck here. I can also do things like trigger on and off on-screen graphics. You can now see that JP graphic top left. So kill that and go to a hold graphic and come back to our live screen or maybe trigger like a be right back if I'm uh, perhaps need to step away from my uh, desk for a minute while I'm on a Zoom. So you get the idea. So the Stream Deck, it has the controls for that. It also has controls for my uh, ring light, which I mentioned before is up here. And so by pressing the night light button, I can take the volume of this um, light down or up. And you can also start and stop the recording here on these buttons as well. So lots of stuff you can do with it. If you want to check this out, there are loads of different versions of the Stream Deck available, and it's integrated with all these different apps, including Teams and Zoom and PowerPoint Office. So it's good for productivity. You can do reactions and manage live streaming with it. And crucially, it also works with Ecamm Live, which is the software that I am using. Now, to give you an idea of what this looks like, let me put Ecamm into its special mode, which is live demo mode. Okay, as you can see here, this is Ecamm Live running on the desktop of my Mac. And crucially, it's got a few things going on. You can see in our main recording window, I've got the different camera controls here on the window, including that external camera that's pointed at the Wave XLR. I've got different scenes, which I can launch, including a two camera mode. I've set mine up for live stream. There's also the screen share mode that you saw before. Also like a cropped in version of me for tight impact shots hold screens, and also then my live camera mode. Down here, you've got different overlays that we can turn on, including those on-screen graphics that I mentioned before, which we can turn on and off, some of which are available in every scene, some of which I can turn on and off here. You can also adapt and manage the look of this camera. So here we have, for example, the ability to zoom and pan my existing camera setup. You can adjust things like brightness, temperature controls, tint, make yourself really pink if you want to, et cetera. And also do things like mirror your camera feed if you are getting a back to front look in your camera, black and white, sepia, all those kind of fun things. So we can manage all of that here. Crucially, you can also manage from this panel your recording, which is what we're doing at the moment, 
and also your live streaming output, including being able to output directly to LinkedIn video, to YouTube live stream, to Twitch, and any other streaming platform that you want to. Also integrates with things like Restream for streaming to multiple platforms simultaneously. All of that can be managed here. And we can also manage things like comments coming back in from those streaming platforms. So tons you can do with this. Okay, let's exit this mode. So there you go. Ecamm Live is the controller managed by Stream Deck. I hope this is a helpful video to give you an idea of how you can essentially look good on Zoom or make your own videos like this. Crucial things to remember is we've got the cameras. I, I, there are plenty of cameras on the market, right? There are loads of options, but the ZVE 10, I think, is a pretty solid choice if you're going from the very beginner to more intermediary. Getting a great light is one of the biggest things you can do. Even if you can't afford a very good camera, getting a better light source into a bad camera will make you look a ton better. And to be honest, particularly for meetings, webinars and stuff, like upgrade your sound. Sound is like the most important thing. Ultimately, really, probably no one cares what you look like. If they can't hear you, then it's not a lot of good. Great audio makes up for bad video every day of the week. And then the control software, it just gives you tons of options of things to do. And it's basically how my workflow for making these videos has become viable. Is basically, I just turn the camera on. I follow the, the guys at Think Media who get, always use that recommendation. Sean Cannell talks about it all the time just start recording, just hit record. And so I do, I've started hitting record using these cameras, using these lights and setup. I can be on and streaming or recording in the matter of moments from sitting down at this desk. I didn't mention the desk itself is a sit stand desk. It just gives you flexibility to get up and down and having an extra tripod around with that extra camera means I can just use this whole setup and move and change the rig very quickly. So hopefully those are some helpful tips. I'd love your thoughts and comments below. Hope this was helpful. As I say, it's not the usual type of video, but People ask me about it all the time. So I thought I would just do this for the year 2023 of our Lord. And you know, now what I use, maybe I'll do another one in 12 months and let you know if anything new comes in. Okay. I think that covers most of what I wanted to get done. Lights, camera, action. Away we go. Thanks so much for watching.